time now for our health segment, and we're joined by our In Focus health correspondent, Lino Madu, who's going to tell us about the fight against AIDS. Tell us more, Lenore. Oh, yes, yeah, thank you, Dimiake. Well, today is World AIDS Vaccine Day, and it marks the day 13 years ago when former U.S. President Bill Clinton challenged the world to develop an AIDS vaccine within a decade. Though an effective vaccine still has not been found, AIDS activists use the day to raise awareness for AIDS vaccines, educate communities about HIV prevention and research for an AIDS vaccine, and bring attention to the ways in which ordinary people can be a part of the international effort to stem the pandemic. While male condoms are widely promoted as an effective tool to prevent HIV AIDS infections, but have you ever heard of a female condom? For many people, the answer, the answer is probably no. An organization in Washington is working to give the female condom the attention and funding they believe it deserves. Sarah Sapel is the president of the Center for Health and Gender Equity. We advocate for the U.S. government uh, to take a stronger role with uh, making sure that women in countries that are receiving U.S. foreign assistance for HIV, AIDS, and family planning actually get the programming education to access and use female condoms. We need to educate um, everybody at the community, national government, local government, everywhere to make sure that they know that this tool is available, it's, it's effective, um, and that women need it, and they will use it if they have it. Being stung by a bee might have some people rushing to a hospital. But in Tunisia, patients are queuing up to receive bee stings as therapy. Bee sting therapy dates back thousands of years. This Asian remedy is believed to ease pain, curb diabetes, and cure even cancer. The practice is similar to acupuncture in that it uses bee stingers instead of needles, placing live bees on a patient's body at certain pressure points. The bee's toxin is said to be a natural medicine. One patient at a clinic in Tunis says she has finally found a solution to her hair loss. I have been receiving treatment here for three years. I went to conventional doctors and they were unable to find a solution. I tried many medicines. I came here and received treatment with bee stings, drank pollen and royal jelly, and have been seeing results. Doctors use tweezers to pick up bees, placing them on the pressure point of a painful area. The bees sting instinctively, and the stinger is then left in the body for several hours. Patients say it helps to ease their discomfort. Trained practitioners decide how long the stinger should stay in a body and how many bees should be used. At most, a patient can be stung more than a hundred times or a minimum of four or five times. Monsef Shuturu is a bee sting therapist. He says the therapy is effective. Scientific research shows that bees can treat some 499 diseases. Every type of liquid secreted by bees can cure diseases. Honey can cure some diseases. Bee venom can treat some illnesses. And pollen can treat some illnesses. Royal jelly can treat many diseases, especially neurological ones. Western-trained doctors dismiss the treatment as unscientific and dangerous. Wide Idris is a physiotherapist. I have a patient who had 115 treatments of bee acupuncture without any results. I think bee acupuncture convinces patients psychologically that it's working but has no real medical results. Bee sting therapy is becoming increasingly popular in Tunisia but the country's health ministry does not recognize it as a bona fide medical practice. I think some people will need a little bit of courage for this therapy. And that's your health report for today. Thanks, Leno. Well, I won't be ducking any bees, I guess, when I see them. As always, thank you so much, Leno Madu, for always giving us the most important health news. And she joins us every Tuesday and Thursday right here on In Focus.